I've met multiple people that are Caucasians, right? And I'm like, bro, you ever been with a black girl? No. And I meet a lot of black dudes and be like, hey, yo, bro, like, you ever been with a white girl? Or dated a white girl? You know what I'm saying? No. What pushed you to this, I want to try to talk to a, a black girl? I, this is going to sound odd. I always say it's probably like, to me, it was like being gay. Like, gay guys know they're gay. Mm. They don't know why they're gay. They're just gay. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, basically, my, my right. was like, this is what we like. And I looked at it like, this is what we're doing. This Let's ride. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically you what You ready, is. bro? Why fight it? Let's go. Uh, always, but it was weird. Like, always, I didn't go to school with a lot of black women. Mm. My school was probably white. Um, I, I don't know. But you're saying Cincinnati, Ohio, or Ohio as a whole is not a state that you'd be like, bro, it's a lot of black people there. Now, granted, there's a lot of black people everywhere. Yeah. But it's like, at what age did you understand, like, yo, bro? bro oh, I was young, I told bro. them bitches, I'm you talking like paper different strokes, <sighs> good times, you know, facts of life. I was looking at Tootie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but let's not even get on Janet Jackson. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a yeah. I don't know. So like as you're growing up, right? Not only just from that culture dynamic, um who did you who did you look up to or who inspired you the most for you to identify like, bro, I want to I want to rock with this this comedian. I would say I wouldn't say it's one comedian. I would say when when I saw Def Comedy Jam the first time I was in high school, mm. I had never seen a crowd one, I'd never seen a, a, a someone like Martin just literally go in on people. Personally, just right. And, and like, I'm talking like hard when he said that, uh, you know, when he said the one about somebody, MC Light, and he goes, and I'm there. Mm -hmm. And the crowd went nuts when he first said it. I said, like, oh, he's going to get, he's going to die. Yeah. And then everybody just started laughing. I went, oh, wow. Yeah. This is impersonal. Yeah. And just seeing like <laughs> Bernie Mac on there and just, I mean, all the greats, and I was like, that's the reaction I want. Yeah. I didn't want the, uh, mm -hmm. I like him like moving out right. the seats right. type. Cause I always say like, <laughs> the biggest difference between white audiences and black audiences is it's the it's the whole extreme. Mm -hmm. You'll never bomb that bad in a white audience, mm. but you'll also won't get the love from right. a white audience. A so point. it's like the extreme on both the sides. And I think a lot of white comics, when I was coming up, they went, when, even when I got to LA, I was doing all the black rooms because that's who knew me. You know, Guy Tory gave me my first shot at Fat Tuesdays. And man, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, everybody was at Fat Tuesday. Mm. Everybody. I mean, you, you, there, it wouldn't be a night. You see Denzel there. You see mm. Kobe there. You see Shaq. You see everybody was there. Right. You know, I got, I got my first movie because Jamie Foxx was there. Mm. You know, so he's like, you never knew who was in the audience. But I think a lot of the white comics wouldn't do it. Because they, I think they would see Def Jam. They would see Showtime at right. the Apollo. And that was probably intimidating. Right. To me, it was like, oh. I, I always looked at it like, if I could do the Apollo, man, if I can make them laugh, yeah. I'm good. But like, Nah, for real. Like, if you can make us laugh, bro, you good in the hood. You know what I'm saying? That's why certain people give white people the N-word pass. Because it's like, bro, you cold as fuck. We can fuck with shit. Fuck, you can see it. Nah, I never allowed it. You know what I'm saying? Just because, like, we different, you know what I'm saying? But we the same though, you know what I'm saying? So there ain't nothing against no white people. I fuck with white people behaving in the bitch. I fuck with white girl too, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm mad in the bitch last night. We lost to the Warriors, man. We lost to the Warriors, bro. LeBron wasn't playing, Austin Reeves wasn't playing and shit, but the Warriors were at full motherfucking capacity. And they ain't beat our ass bad, but they got us, man. They got us. But we looking good though. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. We looking good in the bitch. But not 80, 80 to, I mean, for 80 to be playing and not LeBron or Austin Reeves. We was looking good though, man. Oh, shit. Make sure y'all come and subscribe. Though. We going back to the video, man. My bad. It was on my mind the whole time. I had to say it. No cap. Like, uh, what I'm hearing is you didn't want to be safe, right? Because safe is two, two different sides. Like, when you're safe, you're that person that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But when you're not, it's just like, bro, you either got some lovers that's like dying about your content or it's just like, oh, I just don't like them. So much so that I'm like, David Chappelle, right? And even recently, uh, Chris Rock, right? When you, when, when you use comedy, the state of comedy now is, it's still an art, right? It's a form of expression. 
but it's still a from a joking matter. I I I seen a person like Richard Pryor use comedy to inform people, you know what I'm saying, about the insufficiencies of humanity, right? And he was slipping in strategically, and obviously you see David Chappelle do it too. You know, his the art of his storytelling is something that I love to admire, but do you think the state of comedy is too serious now? I mean, it can be, but I think if you go to a live show, like if you really go to a comedy club, mm -hmm. nothing's changed. I think we're so caught up in social media and the internet, we think it's hindering comedians, mm. and you think we're tailoring our acts towards that, whether it's too political or can't say what we want to say. I think that's why we've gotten to the point where you got to put your phones away because you don't want somebody taking a, a 30 second thought of an eight minute joke yeah. and posting it. And then, you know, people just. The thing week. about the internet, too, is the people that really get upset, like, they were never going to pay to see me, anyways. That's a fact. I'm always like this. I, if you send me a DM or a message and you came to my show and you paid money to see me, I'll respond to you because mm -hmm. you, you invested your time and money in me. The least I could do is respond to you. Whether you, 90% of it is good, mm -hmm. but every now and then you'll strike a chord with somebody that ain't like that or something. Right. Doesn't have a lot, but I'll, I'll respond to those people. If you're just going in you and you didn't come see me live, you're going off a clip yeah. or an interview, I go, you're not a fan? Yeah. So I, you're, yeah, so who's so, your opinion? Now, and I have to ask it from a teenage perspective because they see comedy now as the Instagram clip or um, like I look at a guy like Desi Banks, mm -hmm. right? Extremely funny. He has this nah, funny, funny way of life. expressing, you know, the reality of a hood dude. That nigga got the tools on. Okay. Everybody got the tools on. No, I was tough. Right? Uh, Drewski. Another uh, a, a person who is extremely educated, articulate, and he personifies like everybody knows that guy that they portray, right? Coming up in this day and age where you have social media versus when you was coming up, you didn't have, it was word of mouth, you know what I'm saying? You ever heard of this dude named Gary Oh, who? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the benefits of, of both, and, or the benefits of both, and what's the negative or the things that you have to warrant yourself from the other. See, when you bring up someone like Desi Banks or Drewski, it's like those type of guys, and it sounds crazy me being older than them, they inspire me mm. because they, when I was coming up, we, we didn't have the independence. We couldn't just like get our jokes and then build a fan base. Now with Instagram, YouTube, they're not, quote unquote, they don't need the machine, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. They're doing it on their own and like the machine's coming to them. So when I see stuff like that, I'm like, dang. I was like, I just, I wish it was around when I first started. Right. But I, I see Desi all the time. And I'm like, when I tell him, I said, I always make sure I message him and everything. I just tell him, you're killing it. Keep doing it. Because it's it's really is, it's some inspiring stuff to, to think. Because my road manager met Desi Banks at Smoothie King. He used to work at Smoothie King. What? And he was like, he would tell my road manager, like, yeah, I'm trying to do this stand-up thing and doing sketches and stuff. And when we he started to pop, my road manager was like, yo, that That's guy was a dude. smoothie yeah, king. Yeah, yeah. He used to make me smoothies. So to hear stories like that, I'm not one of these quote unquote OGs that are like, yeah, you know, they just they ain't real stand-ups and all that mm -hmm. shit. Look, man, if you can find a way to build a fan base, right. all respect to you. And you can sell tickets mm -hmm. and you can make money and provide a living. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it like, okay, how can I piggyback off that, yeah. you know? Cause last time I was in Atlanta, I mean, I, I called Desi and we did a couple sketches together mm -hmm. just because I want to be a part of that. Right. You know what I mean? And it's fun. And it was cool because he literally just made a bunch of phone calls and all these comics that are up and coming, they all just showed up to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like that fraternity right. that a lot of people don't see. They see comedians and we go at each other and we'll be arguing and that'll get all the clicks, but mm -hmm. they don't realize what really a, a tight knit group it is, you know? Right. We really do support each other Absolutely. for the most part. I've seen it. Hell yeah, and uh, Dizzy Banks, he actually doing the stand up now. He be having some clips on social media about him doing the stand ups and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, a nigga really be working, a nigga be busy as hell, but I ain't gonna lie. Like, if a nigga really could go to like a, uh, one of the, uh, 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 DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller, uh, 
shows. I really would, man. Especially if it's out here in the uh in the south somewhere. I'll go, man, because I really want to see them boys live. Just like how low key, I ain't gonna lie, it probably sound corny as hell, but I really low key want to see like a wild and loud in person. You know what I'm saying? Just not to not to say that they're super lit, but it's like I want to see how that shit would be. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's lit. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I fuck with the line stand up though. I watch Daisy Banks too tight shit. But shout out Daisy Banks, shout out Gary Owen, man. You know what I'm saying? You can tell like he really damn near integrated into black culture. And it's not like black people is the most. I ain't gonna lie to some out there because you got the ignorance. But black culture is the most. We we welcome. We welcome anybody. We ain't gonna just kick you out unless you talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? We welcome anybody. You know what I'm saying? Y'all cool to to do their hair and all the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, culture is culture. You know what I'm saying? And we all need to be one together, man. You feel me? Salute, man. It's been your boy Vic, man. And I'm out. Banger video. Peace.